so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I am Michael Fuckerini here with Jean Del Calo. Hey, 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 everybody. Jacob Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Jeff Simmons. I gotta be honest with you. I'm, I'm coming in. I, I don't feel good right now. I'm trying to pick up my spirits. We just opened the letter from Jody Arias. It was not what I wanted. It was, uh, it seemed like it was handwritten by her. However, <clears throat> she didn't answer any of the questions that I asked, and she just told me to pay five bucks to subscribe to her sub stack. And I checked out the preview for her Substack while I was taking a shit. And it does seem like the kind of stuff that I would be interested in. But I refuse. On principle. Yeah. You're a principled man. Thank you. I've always said that about myself. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to keep writing the murderers and we're, we're going to find our... Uh, yeah. You got to kiss a few murderous frogs before you get your prince. Yes. Yes, that is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, you got a little preview of that Substack, huh? Yeah, it seems like the kind of thing I'm like, like. You get like a little sample of her writing. Uh, dude, let me read you. Something cracked me up. Damn, she already made We're you laugh. advertising for she, her now. She did make me laugh. Oh, my God. He's back. She, she's got my heart on the string. Wow. I hate this, man. I mean, dude, look at it this way, Mike. You wrote a letter to Jody Arias, and she responded, nonetheless. True. I put my heart on the line for a girl in fifth grade and dropped a letter in her shoebox, and she never responded. That's mm-hmm. a good point, But Jake. she did send you a Facebook Fan request yes. 20 years later. Yes. So that's kind of like a little letter. Yeah, I guess so. I want to tell you this. On Jody Substack, it says, five resolutions I'm making for 2024. Do you make New Year's resolutions or do you, like me, forego this ritual because you know you'll probably break them in the first 15 minutes of January? Girl, She's please. so relatable. In years past, I broke mine by losing steam or experiencing a moment of weakness. <laughs> Perhaps when someone put a soft, chewy snickerdoodle in front of me. Isn't that cute? Yes. Seems like she writes a lot. Don't murder people. I know. For not wanting to write us back at all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does make it more insulting. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we're writing from, like, you know, almost a company and we're doing a podcast here, you know? I know. <laughs> we got fans. We're putting your name out there. She could have been swimming in snickerdoodles like fucking Scrooge McDuck. I know. I know. Bit the hand that fitter snickerdoodles. <laughs> <laughs> just, I know. Just know you're wearing the helmet. I know, I know. But we got a fun one planned tonight, John. I really hope I win this toss because yeah. this is a guy who you know I I, I knowed a bunch about before I started looking him up this week, and uh, it seemed like the kind of guy who who you would have a lot of fun with. Okay. Well, honestly. I don't even know if I'm going to put my full heart into this. Yeah. Because your spirits are kind of low right now. They need to be lifted. So. They're about to be picked up. We're going to talk about somebody I like. I mean, you can't half-ass a coin flip. No, it's you 50, can't. It's 50-50. So. Mm-hmm. Regardless, yeah. No matter how much effort you put in, still. Oh. Yowzer. Here we go, Mike. You Thank you. It. All right, here we go. We're picking back up here. Jake, John. I want you to forget everything that you think you know about Middle Eastern dictators. Done. All right, because I'm ready to fill those beautiful brains of yours (laughs) (laughs) with some hot, sloppy knowledge. (laughs) You ready for it? Gross. Yes. Open wide. Because I'm here to talk to you two about Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. (laughs) For real, for a second. I thought it was a different guy. Yeah, so now who's Dane? There was a whole other guy that I never heard of. It was his rug guy. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Do you have trouble getting blood out of carpet? <laughs> uh, the Butcher of Baghdad. I didn't even know he had a nickname. I know. Isn't that neat? You, yeah. find, you find out new things every day. Yeah. But there was so much... Uh, so much shit that I found out about this guy that really put a smile on my face. It's not all doom and gloom with this fucker, Jake. Okay. There was a great GQ article which detailed his time in captivity on an American base in Baghdad. And a lot of the guards became friendly with him. One thing that they told him was, don't divulge any personal information. But 
you know, you're in a room with this guy for God knows how many hours on end each day that you inevitably humanize him and he knows what he's doing. And also he's probably a Riz Lord. He probably is. Absolutely. He, is. <laughs> he did have uh he had multiple wives. He had multiple side bitches. But one thing I respect about him is it sounds as though he always kept his side bitches at bay. You never saw them in public. I like that. Yeah. A man of principles. He is a man of principles. Man of principles. Like, just like me. Yeah. Look mm-hmm. at that. Wow. Oh my God. You and Saddam are it, so alike. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I've been waiting to hear that. But, yeah, Jake, he was born April 28th, 1937 in al Bless you. Thank you. Uh, that word means crooked. Does it really? It really does, yeah. Why would they name a town that? I guess there's Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And Saddam means one who confronts. Damn. Yeah. Whoa. So one who confronts from the crooked place. Kind of set out to do what he did then. Yeah. Yeah. His dad bailed on him. His mom, she was pregnant with him when the dad bailed. So I don't know if this was tied into the dad leaving, why she hated Saddam from utero. She tried to abort him. It didn't take. She tried to kill herself while pregnant. That didn't take either. Oh. So she had to have this fucking kid, Jake. And he was not wanted. It sounds like she created the monster. It does sound like that. So at an early age, Jake, he was sent to... (laughs) We're on the same track here, brother. Yeah. At an early age, he was sent to live with an uncle. Now, while he's away with this uncle, his mother falls in love, and he gets a little stepdad. Not a good guy. You don't want to know what they called this fucking guy? Keith. They called him Hassan the Liar. Imagine having a stepdad named Hassan the Liar, Jake. Dude, yeah. in 1940s Arabian desert, to just be lying your ass off? It was. <laughs> Honestly, pretty cool. Yeah, Dude, it's well, scary. His biggest lie was that uh, he referred to himself as Hassan al Haj, which typically meant that you made the pilgrimage to Mecca. And people were just like, yo ass ain't been to Mecca. Damn. He didn't disappear long enough for people <laughs> to think that he actually <laughs> walked there. How hard it is to hide in the desert, man. <laughs> <laughs> But he was a real motherfucker, and he treated Saddam like shit. He would refer to him refer to him as a son of a dog. Whoa. Yeah, harsh words. That is could a you, liar. Could you imagine? <laughs> yes, I wish Saddam was able to clap back with that at that young of an age, man. Huh. Could you imagine a kid hitting you with that? Lion ass. Oh, you been to Mecca? What's it made of? What's it look like? <laughs> What's it smell like? Oh, you're making me horny. <laughs> Stop calling me a dog. I wish I knew more about Mecca to have made that a better joke. Oh, we'll make the pilgrimage there one day. Wouldn't that be funny if uh, we converted and we went there to <laughs> to learn more about all this? Yeah, that'd be a great prank. Um, We might have discussed it when we talked about Uday Hussein. Mm-hmm. I remember a lot of him. But uh, you can visit Saddam's old palaces now. They're like public museums, kind of, or people still live there? There's one that's a really beautiful museum, but the rest of the palaces, I've seen them... People say that there's a couple dozen, and some people say there's upwards of a hundred palaces. Whoa. I guess it, it's I guess it it's determined by what your definition of a palace would be. I guess a residence, his residence would count as a palace, even though you know we've seen palaces that wouldn't pass muster for us. Some of these places, yeah, palace might just mean McMansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but some of these places really are fucking beautiful, man. And there's one place that people seem to visit the most. This is in uh, Babylon. Um, you could still you could go into like the space where he sat when he would greet people at this fucking place. And you could wander around like there it, there are guards there, but they don't really keep tabs on people. One thing I didn't like was that people take shits in there constantly. Wait, what? People take shits in Saddam's old palace. It's like a public restroom now. It's not supposed to be take. People leave trash, graffiti, and shit. It's like that, not well guarded. That. People are just graffitiing in there and not getting caught. The Iraqi police and the Iraqi military guys strike me as um, police academy cadets. Because that seems like the kind of place where you'd get a, more than a slap on the wrist for doing something like that. Yeah. You know? There's so many people. Now, one thing that people have said about him was that he was a mass murderer and he was responsible for killing a, probably a couple hundred thousand people. However, even people that had a direct connection to people that were murdered by Saddam said, at least when he was in power, we only had to worry about one Saddam. 
Now, in present day Iraq, we have to worry about a thousand Saddams because it's just buck wild now. Really? Once he once the the country was destabilized by them arresting him and uh-huh. shortly thereafter having him hung, it, it was just lawlessness. And I don't know how much better it's gotten today. Never been. Uh, flights, I think, are like sixteen hundred from Philly. Really? Yeah. That seems like the most expensive plane ticket there could be. <laughs> <laughs> but Jake, when he's six, he's taken out of school and he's forced to work, uh, f- do farm work by his stepfather. Okay. Fucking lion ass Hassan. Damn. When he's 10, he goes back to his uncles and he, uh, he becomes a Sunni Muslim. Y'all ever heard of the Sunnis and the Shiites? Does that mean he went from Shiite to Sunni? No. Um, so the uncle was Sunni. So he's he's he wants to be like his uncle. Was he really not affiliated with either group, particularly before that? Saddam. Yeah, he's just a little boy. Okay. Um, but the writing's on the wall, and he's doing everything his his uncle does because it's a guy that's caring for him. Okay. So, um, he eventually ends up joining the Iraqi army, or the uncle was a was an Iraqi army lieutenant. So he takes care of him for a few years, and eventually he goes back to school. And in 1956, Saddam's a grown-ass man now. He joined something called the Bath Party. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah, dude. (laughs) Uh, uh, Do you know the difference between the Bath Party and the Shower Party? What, Mike? I'm asking. If it's your first time at either of them, you have to suck. (laughs) (laughs) The Ba'ath Party's main goal is uh, to unify all of the Arab states, right? And there's a guy in power named uh, General Kasim. So he's at odds with General Kasim. Uh, General Kasim, his main goal is establishing Iraqi independence, whereas uh, Saddam and the rest of the Ba'ath Party are focused on Arab unity, Jake. Yeah. Now, Saddam's quickly making a name for himself as a, uh, a ruthless soldier, and he's at odds with General Kasim to the point where Kasim brings him up on murder charges. So Saddam faces murder charges, but he's found not guilty. Was it from an actual murder, or did he make the whole thing up? He probably did murder somebody. Okay. But also, uh, he's rising through the ranks, so he could have just been seen as as uh, growing competition, mm-hmm. as somebody who could potentially be dangerous. Oh, dude, and there was something... Uh, like the year after that, in March of 59, there was something called the Mosul Uprising. And Saddam and six other dudes from the Ba'ath Party formed an assassin squad. And they knew where General Kasim was going to be. So they were waiting. They came upon him in his car. They flanked the car, and they all started shooting at the car. But the they fucked up. They flanked the car on both sides, so they ended up shooting at each other. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, dude. Straight out of Naked Gun. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> and Saddam, he was shot in the knee. And they made it a couple blocks away to where their getaway driver was supposed to be. However, he wasn't there. What do you think he was doing? One block away, driving the wrong way on the wrong street, doing something equally as Benny Hill-like. He got out of the car to go to a cafe to get himself a coffee and play backgammon. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> the coffee, I understand. You got to be alert for the getaway. But you sat down to gamble. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know how long you're going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. So Saddam knows that because this assassination plot failed, he's going to be killed. So he quickly gets the fuck out of Iraq, and he heads to Syria. And in response to this assassination attempt, 57 members of the Ba'ath Party were sentenced to death. And uh, Saddam was actually sentenced to death in absentia. What does in absentia mean? I mean, he's not there, but they oh. sentence him anyway. Whoa. You ever been sentenced to anything in absentia? No. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's gay that I have it? You just got convicted. He's, yeah, you just uh, got it right now. Yeah. Got but I'm here. Ass. Yeah, you're sentenced to the bath party. Welcome. <laughs> now... The Ba'ath Party was trying to unite the Arab nations. Yes. Was that Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Jordan? Do you know what? All right. I don't know. Trying to do? I don't know what all of them entailed. I would just be guessing if I did. Mm-hmm. But then the other party wants everything to be separate. And yeah, for they, want their own, be they want their own nation. Yes. Kind of like an EU kind of a thing, I guess. Okay. 
<laughs> I guess there wasn't an obvious question mark on the end of my sentence. Yeah, I don't know anything about the EU, so. Hmm. I could make anything up. You could. You know what it is. It's the European Union. He's got it down pat, dude. However, um, who's a part of it? Who's not a part of it? Um, most of them except for the UK. What's the UK's problem? Austin Powers. Uh, they fucked up big time by Brexiting. Uh, that, they were the Brexiters? Mm. Yeah, no, the okay. Breakfast Club? That's not, that's not even... <laughs> we're we're going to stop right here. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> 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 yeah! <laughs> so Saddam, he's escaped to Syria and he eventually makes his way to Cairo. When, when he makes it to Cairo in 1962, he falls in love. Who do you think he falls in love with? Cleopatra. His first cousin. <laughs> <laughs> His first cousin, Sajida, is head over heels for him. He's head over heels for her. He's married multiple times, and he eventually tells uh, the prisoners, uh, or the uh, prison guards who I told you about earlier, that he's only been in love two times, and that's to his first wife and his second wife. His first wife was his cousin. It was. His parents were also first cousins as well. Hmm. Whoa. Does it does DNA not work the same way in the heat over there? What <laughs> it is gets, going makes on? it even hotter, man. <laughs> <laughs> How are they not popping out um little mistakey boys, you know? They might be. They might just like send them out to the desert for a uh Honestly, yeah, yeah that's maybe. probably what happens. Like, yeah. Some DuPont shit. Yeah, it seems pretty common, man. You ever have a hot cousin? Yeah. Do you? No. Uh, no. I, what a, he's what lying a to us. Creepy smile. <laughs> yeah. after that, dude. Oh my god! You think all your cousins are hot, and <laughs> the boys and the girls? Oh my god! <laughs> oh man! But Jake, he falls in love, and uh, he marries uh, the lovely Sajida, which is a beautiful name. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we talk about this all the time. There's good pussy names. There's bad pussy names. Yeah, First cousin it, or not, Sajida is a good Sajida pussy Sajida sounds like vagina. It does a little bit. Middle Eastern. Like Sandy Vagina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it means that girl, good Sandy. See, oh part, <laughs> he says, oh girl, go get that no. Gatorade. I'm trying to eat that Sajida. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't mean You don't that. think so, Jake? No. What do you think it means? Uh, I think it means a nice person. <laughs> what do you think she's coming over here for us for making fun of me? <laughs> That hot little sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me uh, let me pour some slime Jeez. in that sandbox. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Are you gonna barf, Jake? What's your problem here, <laughs> Jake? They got rope off that sandbox. Why don't you put that slime in there, brother? Hate to break it to you, man. Ooh, who got this sandbox so slimy? Oh <laughs> you devil, man! You're making me so horny right now, John. I'm sorry. I'll ease it back. <laughs> 1963, there's a coup. He's born in 37, so he's not even 30 yet, right? Mm -mm. Okay, still a very young man. Young bull. And uh, the fellow that I told you about earlier, General Kasim, he's assassinated. Oh, by, it, by uh, it's like rebels? Uh, the Bath Party. Gotcha. So the Bath Party. They're uh, back. <laughs> they yeah. are back. Yeah. Now, Saddam is jailed briefly. Uh, he's, uh, he's jailed and uh, while he's in jail, he's elected deputy secretary general. So I, I don't know where that ranks in the hierarchy of the new government, yeah. but it's it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, sounds, sounds like a nothing job. <laughs> no traffic tickets at all at that level. Yeah. And the guy who's the president is a guy named President Arif. And uh, can you hold Jake's hand for this? Oh this poor man is killed in a helicopter crash. Wow, in the 60s? Yeah. Wow. There's no way I'm going up on a whirly bird back then. <laughs> now I would. But they're still equally as unsafe. Yeah. The Bath Party briefly loses power, but in July of 1968, they're able to regain it. And at this point, Saddam Hussein has continued to rise through the ranks, and at this point, he's the second in command in government. Whoa. So he's, he's moving up fast. He is. And... uh he eventually moves up. Uh, the guy that's president is Ahmad al-Bakr. 
And in uh, 1979, he steps down. So Saddam is now president. And, dude, there's something he does when he becomes president. It's it's uh, referred to as the purge. And there's video of this. It's fucking insane to watch. So he goes into, like, this assembly hall. And all these supporters of his are there. And he starts talking about how there's assass- there's an assassination plot to kill him now that he's president. And he starts naming dudes, and these dudes, they get up, and he asks them, he asks one dude to come up and talk about his role in the plot. I don't think this guy had anything to do with it, but he wanted to make a public showing of what's possible if you go against his rule. And this guy is up there saying, is admitting to things that I'm not sure that he did. And he's, one by one, he starts identifying all these other guys, and they have cameras, and they're showing these guys getting up and leaving. They're leading a lot of these guys outside to the firing squad. Then eventually, like, once enough people realize what's happening, they start pledging allegiance to Saddam Hussein, like, right there. Yeah, it's pretty intense. There were uh, there were 68 dudes who were, who were charged with treason, and I think 22 of them were murdered that day. Okay. Out of like, was it an assembly hall of like five hundred people in there? I, I would just be guessing, but there looked like at least a couple hundred people. Yeah, there. I mean, sixty-eight wow. is a fucking ton. Yeah, and they took them all outside and they started shooting them so they could hear inside. Yes, yeah, and that's when they're all. Playing yeah, everybody's on board now, and that kind of set the tone. Now, I mentioned earlier how people were were saying that when he was in rule, you knew not to fuck with him, and if you knew you said anything derogatory, you were fucked. However, there was one Saddam, but now there's a fucking thousand Saddams. Now, uh, infrastructure improved, improved with him as president. They had free education. They had free health care. Uh, they were given free food rations. Um, they had electricity in all these remote places in Iraq. And he was like, uh, like our friend Idi Amin from last week. Remember how he would get out, he would take the Jeep, and he would go out and talk to people? Mm-hmm. That was one thing Saddam did, too. He would really? get out and he would talk to people. And as long as you pledged your allegiance to him, you, you stood a good chance of getting what you wanted. I mean, I got to imagine he's got a caravan of guards with him, mm-hmm. right? Now, I know our boys Uday, he had a lot of... Uh, of uh, lookalikes that would stand in for him. Mm-hmm. And it was rumored that Saddam did too. But when Saddam was interviewed, uh, there's a, a a cool like FBI interview when, when he was sent to, it's called Camp Crocker in Baghdad, when, right after they arrested him. He's like, he's like, no, I never had any fucking body doubles. He's like, my son did, but I didn't. That was just a thing that people made up. Hmm. And uh, I read the transcript. Like most of what he says does seem truthful. In that same transcript, he talks about his feelings toward the United States. He's like, look, I don't hate the United States. I just hate the United States government. <laughs> Cause it was, and uh, people were, uh, people thought that, that he was uh, working in conjunction with Osama bin Laden. He's like, never trust anybody with that kind of a beard. <laughs> Damn. Does he not have the mustache? Is that why he said it? He did. Well, he's got a beard, Yeah, but he's referring to like uh, bin Laden's fucking hangy beard. Yeah. 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 Which she ended up, Having to grow when he was in jail, right? Uh, Saddam Hussein. Oh, that's when he was. Yeah, well, he was underground for a while. He was when they found him. He was, I think, like seven miles outside of his hometown, and he was in this underground bunker. A guy that they were paying to like keep him supplied up eventually ratted on him, and that's how they found him because they got intel that they were going to um, that he was at the spot. They searched the area, they didn't find anything, and then as they were like leaving one of the soldiers stepped on the hatch that led to his underground encampment. Wow. And they realized it felt weird weird there as opposed to the other place they had just walked in. That's how they were able to get him. And he was all bearded up then. Uh-huh. But, can't bring an electric shaver and a mirror into the cave. I don't understand what they're doing down there. It's got to feel good, though. You know, you're on, you're, you want to feel earthy. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably barefoot a lot. Jacking off constantly. <laughs> <laughs> they, they open the hatch it reeks of cum they put it right back on they're like no we're good we already checked it definitely, nobody down here definitely poking a few holes in the wall that's for sure it definitely doesn't smell like a cummy dictator but dude, these cave drawings oh my god that's not drawings 
But that fucking purge video is wild. And uh, you could see the fear in these guys' eyes as they're speaking. Dude, that was th- one of the most terrifying things I've heard you tell us. Yeah, that was pretty intense. That's evil. And, dude, it's the video is black and white, too, which makes it scarier this to me. This is from the like, late 60s, early 70s? Dude, this was 1979 he came into power. Okay. And he was in power until 2003 is when they caught him. Wow, dude. And this is just footage on YouTube? Yeah. I mean, there's you don't see any violence on camera, yeah. but you see these guys being taken out. Uh-huh. You know, they, you know where they're going. Are they like going, like complying, or are they ki- are they kicking and screaming and stuff? Everybody's like that? complying because yeah. everybody knows his reputation. Everybody knows that's part of like how he rose to the ranks was being somebody who's capable of extreme violence. Yeah. Um. So that's 1979. In 1980, uh, he engages in the Iraq versus Iran war. And all told, the war lasted like eight years, and there were over like a million dead on both sides. And at the time, the United States backed Iraq, which was interesting. And I think you see that in a lot of people that the U.S. ends up turning on, is that at one time, there were uh, American assets or, or people that the United States worked with in yeah. some degree. When he was uh, being held captive, one of the soldiers said that Hussein was giving him the rundown of how he felt about each individual president. He loved Ronald Reagan because he said during this Iran-Iraq war between 80 and 88, uh, Ronald Reagan, he would give him, um, he uh, supplied him with uh, with cash, with weapons, and with helicopters. God, the and three he, things I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was so-so on Bill Clinton, and uh, he hated both Bushes. But he later softened on uh, George W. Bush. He said he would like to like meet with him and apologize to him. Did he ever speak on Naked Gun 1? I don't know. He loved American movies. It's funny you bring that up. He definitely saw that then. Dude, I don't doubt that he did. That he did not. Um, But, uh, oh yeah, he said he would watch American movies to get a feel for American culture, which is a pretty smart thing to do. Yeah. And uh, two of his favorites were The Godfather, and he also loved Scarface. Jesus Christ. Christ, dude. He he's loves absolute he's a, stereotypical <laughs> dictator. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. You Every know, fucking dickhead you went to high school with. Dude, you know he had the framed Tony Montana picture with the fake cocaine in it. <laughs> That's so weird, though. Was he like a... Did he drink or do any drugs? Mm-hmm. Okay. He loved wine, even though he, he claimed uh, that he was a Muslim. Right. And he's supposed to be none. Right. You're not bent. supposed to have any. But he would drink wine, and he loved it. He also loved Cuban cigars. He was a friend of Fidel Castro. Castro just used to unload the best cigars on him, and he just smoked cigars constantly. Damn, Damn, what a sick plug, dude. Yeah. Yeah. One funny thing uh, regarding Scarface is uh, he loved the movie Scarface so much that he had a trust fund that he named Montana Management (laughs) after Tony Montana. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh how I cool! Feel so bad that he never got to meet Al Pacino. I know. <laughs> I don't doubt that he didn't, man. Because uh, who's to say that? <laughs> when he, would he have met Al Pacino? Bro, here's the deal. Like the you have to James think. Island. <laughs> he does. He is able to. Um, people come over there to meet with him. There. Oh fuck! What was the name of this fucking guy? I'll think of it at some point. But there was a uh, fuck. Somebody he gave somebody the key to the city. I'll think of it at some point. But um, it was just a, a pastor from a random church in Detroit, which happened to have a lot of um, Iraqi exiles come to this church. He appreciated uh, him taking these Iraqi people in, even though a lot of the people fled because he was so oppressive, that he invited this guy over to Iraq, and he ended up giving his church a half a million dollars. Wow. In return, the guy gave him, he convinced the mayor of Detroit at the time to give Saddam the key to the city. So Saddam has the key to Detroit. Shut up. Yeah. Are you? He still had. Well, he doesn't have any more. So if he's doing he that, brought it to heaven, dude. I know this is a Saudi prince thing, but Saudi princes pay for high level porn stars to come over there and bang for the week, and I've then go back home. That. Yeah. If you're a Saudi prince, tonight's your night. Who are you calling? <sighs> Sadie Andrews. Damn, don't even know her. Oh. It's the it's the lady covered in cum that I sent to the group chat. She's got a mom mom tattoo on her collarbone. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh yes, the mom mom tattoo. Now I remember. What does it say? Does it say I uh, love mom mom or I like heart mom mom? Yeah, something. love grandma. Oh, here we go. 
Yeah, it's like her grandmom's signature. It's like she clearly took this off of a letter that her grandmother wrote. It says, <laughs> love grandma. How old is that lady? Sadie Andrews? Uh, probably close to 40. That's it? Yeah. I thought she was the grandma in that picture. Stop it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm sorry. You dare. How, how fucking dare you? I mean... Lovely lady. Uh, sorry. Lovely lady. Absolutely. Really uh, takes care of people. Knows how to treat people. And uh, she broke my OnlyFans sobriety recently. Oh, wow. I had been... Is she a recent uh, lady in your life? No, I've been aware of her for a long time. And I, I was a long time supporter. I had... I was like, you know what? Um, I was going through a phase where like, all right, I'm thinking like, all right, how... How quickly can I get a house? And I'm thinking about what I could like cut out. As far as my spending, I'm like, all right, <laughs> spending like maybe like 30 bucks a month on OnlyFans. I was like, all right, I'm just going to cut that out. And I made that like two months. And then uh, last week, I just went ape shit on OnlyFans again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like using <laughs> fucking Adderall to lose weight. You just d gain double the weight back. Yep. <laughs> How much are you dropping now on OnlyFans? Not a lot. Uh, I might be at like 30 bucks a month. You're back up to 30. Okay. Yeah. But you switched it up. You got different gals in, in now. I usually just resubscribe. I like who I like. Okay. okay. But I think, yeah, so if these Saudi princes are doing that, you know, if Saddam Hussein loves the movie, Good loves Goodfellas, he loves Scarface, you know, he loves okay. Godfather. What's to say he's not going to drop a couple hundred grand to get Al Pacino over there? It's like that scene in Tropic Thunder when they make Ben Stiller do the movie over again. <laughs> just Simple Jack. It. Yeah, Simple Yeah, Simple Jack. You got to think that the pictures would have come out by now. Right? Because you're not having fucking Scarface to your palace without getting a picture with them. Yeah. That's a framed photo in the dining room. Yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe even a painting. <laughs> and people did loot all the shit that was in his palaces, so. Oh, yeah. Somebody might have it. Yeah. It's like the fucking Tupac murder weapon that somebody <laughs> just got caught with. Was it the killer? Who knows? Was it the killer? Do you know? <laughs> They, wait, they arrested someone last year, right? When yeah, we were in, at Keefe D. Was that the real person? Yeah. Keefe D. They think he's the murderer. That sounds like a McNugget he, buddy. I'm they sorry. They think he had something to do with it. I think he, I don't remember what he was charged with. It might have been conspiracy. So if he's not the trigger man, he's, they think he's and part the of the driver. plot. Well, I mean, there's more than one person in the car, right? Or would I think the so. driver of the car shoot? I would think that there's more than one person, yeah. but that's just, you know, me and conjecture, brother. A lot of scissoring. Yes, you and Conjecture are mm. always scissoring. Everybody, I just want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Joy Mode. And Jake, John, I think I speak for everyone on this panel when I say we want to have better sex. Am I right? Ooh, damn right. Preach. Jake, Who doesn't? Sometimes um, I would overhear my mother and father, and my father wouldn't, and at times my mother wouldn't. But I do, and that's all that matters. If you go to usejoymode.com and use promo code BUCKBUCK, you get 20% off your order and you get free shipping. And Jake, the issue here is that the over-the-counter erection pills contain unregulated chemicals. They suggest unsafe doses and include the risk of several other health problems. Yeah, I hate that, Mike. That's why we're partnering with our friends over at Joy Mode. Joy Mode? John, I, I know you can't wait to tear those fucking things open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They are nice. I didn't get any, though. John, can I borrow one of yours, please? Jake, I can hear your boner ripping through your pants right now. So, Jake, this, too many. this is like a pre-workout, but for sex. And it features all ingredients that have been assessed in peer-reviewed journals and all ingredients that have been studied and researched in humans. And it comes in a palm-sized packet, like your favorite electrolyte powder. You're simply going to mix it with six to eight ounces of water 45 minutes before sexual activity and watch the magic unfold, Jake. Oh, I'm watching it unfold right now. Jake, I want you to redefine your intimacy and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with code BuckBuck. That's 20% off and free shipping with code BuckBuck at usejoymode, J-O-Y-M-O-D-E.com. Ingredients with integrity, Joy Mode. It's boner time. It's been boner time. We should get one of those clocks where the hands are always moving. And the hands it says both, boner, time. Both boners. boner time. It says joy mode boner time. Yeah. <laughs> we should make that clock. That penis. We clock. will. Yes. Use joymode.com, promo code buck buck, 20% off and free shipping. 
Jake, I'm about to tell you about a fucked up massacre. Are you oh, ready no. to hear about it? Yeah, let's do it. It's called the Halabja Massacre. <laughs> don't. Don't. <laughs> make a noise at it. Good job. What were you about to do with that mail? Go zoom tight. <laughs> Right before the Iran-Iraq war ends, uh, um, yeah, Hassan, but uh, Saddam is just like, all right, enough of this shit. He uses this gas that he's been developing. It's primarily mustard gas, but there's a few other chemical agents inside of it. Yeah, little fucking emerald yeah. dash. <laughs> yeah. Bunch of fart jars. But uh, unfortunately, like he gasses 5,000 Kurdish villagers. Why? Yeah, like just an innocent group of people on purpose? Or was he like testing his gas and it went awry? There were Kurdish rebels that were um, teaming up to fight alongside Iranian soldiers. So I think this is his way of saying, fuck you. And I, and they I share a border, I suppose. Well, one thing about the Kurds that I, that I think is true is that um, they don't have like a specific, they don't have like a recognized homeland. So they're occupying space in Iraq. Okay. Um, so I think they're kind of viewed as outsiders. Gotcha. Kind of like, I don't know, free agents maybe. Yeah. I would have to learn more about this to give you a more definitive answer, but that's what I believe to be true. I was just going to tell you, ask you to explain, um, Kurds to Jake. So, um, Jake, when you go to Wisconsin, yes, you can get a plate of them and I hear they're delicious. Okay. But they have no home. They have no home. <laughs> have it's home your responsibility to give them a home inside your belly. Jake. I will give them a, a big home. But 5,000 of these uh, Curtis villagers are gassed. And there's like tons of kids that he fucking gasses. And there were, um, there were reporters that ended up going to the scene of where these people were gassed. And like, you know, it was like, it was a, I've read numerous horrific descriptions of what was happening there. People that survived said that when the gas hit, you smell like uh, there's like an apple smell. And then it quickly turns rancid. And then some people reported that the smell went back to apples. And there, there, one of the ladies who was telling, giving her description, she says she still has problems with her esophagus to this day. Jesus Christ. This was fucking... How many people survived? I don't know how many survive. So did he, how did he do this? He put this in like in the gas lines of like the neighborhood? No. So one of the overhead? Yeah, one of the guys that was given the description of that day said um he j- he heard it sounded like metal being dropped on the ground. And then people started screaming and then some people like they were delirious right away. Other people were just being choked by it immediately. Just a very fucked up scene. So it was gas stored in like metal crates that released when they Hit the ground? I, I don't know what the packaging was like. Okay. Um, yeah, I've never, like, I don't know if I've even seen a movie where they drop gas on a yeah. village or anything like that. Sounds, well, I mean, it is a war crime. Was it a war crime then? Did yeah, they I have mean, war well, crimes. That's eventually when he goes to trial, it's just a series of, like, fucking war crimes. Yeah. Um, eventually, reporters show up and, uh, people that have like surviving kids are just trying to hand off kids that are barely clinging to life. And they're just like, here, take a kid. And they're like, I'm a reporter. No, they, I mean, they ended up taking them. Uh, oh, just get them. So they were like, uh, like, uh, choppered in to the scene uh, and they were just going to fucking yeah. stick around for a while, get the scoop and then get the fuck out. But like, these people are just like, we're going to die if you don't take this kid. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Easily one of the more fucked up things that he's done. In August of 1988, which was like fucking five months after that, there's a ceasefire between Iran and Iraq. Not long after that, in 1990, Iraq invades Kuwait. And Kuwait's like a very small country. However, they're oil rich. And Saddam felt as though with the prices that they were setting for oil, that he was fucking up Iraq's money with what they were selling oil for. So he felt like, all right, this is a small place. I'm just going to fucking invade it, take over. And then, you know, the prices will get straightened out. Um, on top of this, too, one of the reasons that could have been motivation for Iraq invading Kuwait was that Iraq was billions of dollars in debt to Kuwait for that Iran-Iraq war. So I think he thought that, like, maybe it's just like, all right, we can overpower them with our army and not have to owe that money anymore. Yeah. Nice. 
And is that what starts Operation Desert Storm? It is, man. And it's yeah. a, it's Whoa. weird to see like how all this shit ties in. Yeah. And in January of ninety one is when Desert Storm kicks off, and the fight, most of the fighting, they I think they call it like the hundred hour war. It was just like that. That's from that. Yes, I thought that was like an ancient war. I'm. Dumb. Let me think. I think that might be the hundred day war or, or something like that. Hundred years war. I don't know. Hundred beers. Yo, now we're fucking talking, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Yo, imagine like writing to your letter, <laughs> letter to your sweetheart. Just going off course. It's like, yo, if you go to the fucking gas station, <laughs> could you pick me up like 12 Slim Jims and a monster? <laughs> yeah, things that I've never eaten in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, so they, they get fucking cleaned up pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. But Saddam's still claiming that like he was the victor in all of this. Yeah. Uh, in ninety October of ninety five, they hold a presidential referendum, and he wins like ninety nine point six percent of the ballot. The, the referendum, yeah. very popular. he had to make that point for just so it didn't. They didn't think it was a great <laughs> operation. Well, no, dude. He uh, there's an, there's one more before he's taken out of power, and he gets even more a higher percentage of the vote. Whoa. 115% yeah. of voters. <laughs> the only question on the referendum was, do you approve of Saddam Hussein as president? <laughs> and there was only a yes, boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, only, the only people who checked no were getting, uh, they were going door to door, making people do check marks. <laughs> the person you give your ballot is just holding a gun to your head the whole time. But dude, they were going door to door, just saying like, look, we just want to get a feel for how you're going to vote. Which was them basically telling you... What was the other option? They would kill them. Yeah. So th- there were people that didn't vote for him, so I'm sure they were quickly found out and, and disposed of. You voting for Saddam? Would I? Yeah. In yeah. that situation. I would, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm going to vote for the guy that causes me to live. Yeah. He's the only guy. Eventually, he gives you internet. Oh, my God. I bet you they had it before I did. (laughs) (laughs) I guarantee it. And, dude, uh, um, literacy was one of the uh, bigger initiatives. And it was you had to learn how to read. Like, it was unacceptable to be illiterate in Iraq. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's especially incredible because he didn't go to school for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So it's clear that, like, this was, like, something that he thought would set Iraq above other nations. Yeah. Saying, like, look... I dare you to hand somebody a fucking Harry Potter book and they can't read it. There's no fucking Floyd Mayweather's in Iraq. And I've said that from day one, Jake. But I, I mentioned... Shut up about it. I mentioned all the good things, but then 9-11 happens, Jake. I remember. All right. And initially, uh, the U.S. heads to Afghanistan to fight against the baddies. But then in 2003... Uh, they claim that there's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Yeah. There were never any weapons of mass destruction. During that inter- that FBI interview that I mentioned a little bit earlier, he's like, uh, he's flat out asked. He's like, did you have them somewhere? And like, they just didn't find them. He's like, no. He's like, the only, re-, he's like, I was, I was developing them. The only reason why he stopped was because of the UN sanctions that he was facing. He's like, he followed them. He did. He abided by the sanctions. He did because they there was no way around this. Like yeah. they were they were providing um they were providing food for Iraq too. So like if he didn't comply, you know people were going to fucking starve. Yeah, that was only part of it too. There were economic sanctions. Like they were they were hit pretty hard. But he says, look, as soon as the UN was out of my hair, I was going to start it back up again. <laughs> so I believe yeah, him when he yeah, fucking yeah. says it. Yeah. Okay. So it's not for naught that right, yeah. they went over. They Wasn't GW trying to like do this for his dad? A lot of people think that, yeah, you know, but that's just conjecture. Yeah, but I know like, how you and conjecture. I might. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, your your dad already won the first war. Yeah, you might not have killed him then, but you know what more do you want? But then again, you know, I'll never please my father. So what do I know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Should I please my father? Stop oh my saying God. it that way. <laughs> Don't say it that way. Maybe we could join the bath party together. <laughs> Start at Luther. We call him up. He's probably asleep. <laughs> He's really going to go home. <laughs> but Saddam had to submit like this, uh, this like weapons inventory to the UN. And they were like, <coughs> it was like something crazy. Like, like, 
like a 15, oh fuck, was it like 15,000, like a 15,000 item inventory of all the weapons that the army has. But like weapons of mass destruction weren't on that, but the U.S. claimed that he had them. So then the U.S. went back into Iraq. There are still people there. They say they're there for like training purposes. U.S. Pe- yeah. uh, people? There was like soldiers or? There was an official withdrawal, but there are still U.S. soldiers in Iraq. And they oh, say there's a couple thousand. And they say yeah. that they're just there for like training purposes or some shit. But yeah. there's still people there and it's over 20 years later. Yeah, I mean, you're there for probably, do you know how long they would stay there for on one tour of duty? I think a normal deployment is maybe 18 months. Oh, okay, so they're there for a yeah, l- yeah. long time. But they could, I mean, you're going to be somewhere. Right. Right. So it yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah. It sounds like they would, you would start off somewhere to get acclimated to the Middle East that was outside of where it was buck wild. And then they would just put you wherever they're going to put you. One of the crazier things that, that I learned was that uh, the guys who were tasked with, with guarding Saddam Hussein were national guardsmen. And they were told that like, well, the, the one guy who was one of the guards, he says, like, when I went to, to enlist, the recruiter assured my dad, he's like, he's never going to leave the fucking state. But he's like, we were brought oh. over there and it's like, we were interviewed and I kind of had an idea who we might be guarding. He's like, I wasn't sure, but I was like, look, I think I know what this is and I really want to do it. And they're just like, all right, man. And, uh, that, that was, that was what they were doing in fucking Baghdad. It's just guarding Saddam Hussein until like his trial came up. Where was he? He was being held in a base in Baghdad. Okay. And that's after they pulled him out of his Yeah, right after cave. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, not before, because that wouldn't make sense. You fucking idiot. I don't know. That was me yelling at Well, me. maybe he could have escaped, and then they got him again. True. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Mike. <laughs> God, thank you so much. Want to join the bath party? <laughs> no, stop trying to get me to hang out with you and your naked dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold Jake's hand for this too oh God. We've already discussed this in a previous episode But July 22nd, 2003 Uday and Kuse are murdered I completely forgot about this Yeah One one uh, funny fucked up thing um, A couple funny fucked up things about Uday and Kuse Kuse was a younger brother However, Saddam chose him To succeed him which infuriated Uday, but he's just Naturally. like, Look, Uday is too nuts, even by my standards, uh-huh. <laughs> to come into power. He went to one fucking uh, soccer practice and saw him kicking concrete <laughs> balls and was like, yikes, yowzers. I don't think I'm going to give this guy the, the fucking throne. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, Saddam told this funny story. The, the What I keep referencing is this GQ, GQ article named Tuesdays with Saddam. What year is that from? The GQ article? Yeah. I think it's from... It's the early 2000s. So he was still alive. I don't know if he was still alive then. You know, I have every issue of GQ from the year yeah. 2000. To, from the year 2000. What was that Mitch Albom? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. referencing that. It was hot at the time. What? Tuesdays with Maury. Oh. That was a, a big uh, book and TV movie. From the 80s? From the 90s. Or 2000, early 2000s. 2000s. Really? It's yeah. that recent? Yeah. Huh. thought it was... An old fucking book or some shit, dude. I'm going to stop talking now. No, brother. But uh, a funny story that he liked to tell about Uday to these soldiers when he was locked up was that before Uday got married, Saddam arranged for him to have three consecutive nights of prostitutes. But after the first night, the first night prostitute was so good that Uday said, don't send the second and third night ladies. In fact, shoot them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessary. We can just give them a refund. We, we, we just give them their money. Yeah. I want their faces shut. <laughs> December 13th, 2003, Saddam is captured. They find him. It's described as like a little spider hole. That small of a space? It's Dude, to get down there, the, the entrance way that leads to the ladder, which goes down into this little, little space, I think it's like 18 inches wide. It's a Yiddish tunnel. So... Um, he he had weapons down there, so it's interesting that he didn't just start shooting at whoever came down right, there. Right, if he knows he's going down, maybe he thought he stood a chance on trial. Could have been, yeah. yeah. Did well, he have anybody with him in there? No, it, it was just, it was just him. One. Yeah. It was just him. But so if, somebody came like at least every couple days to bring him supplies, yes. right? Yeah. Wow. How 
fucking scary that must have been. But dude, it's every in- time you drop supplies off, you must just be scared of getting sniped in the head. Yeah, you just put the lampshade on your head and hide <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the point you just made. He he spoke as though he was eventually going to become president of Iraq again one day. Uh-huh. Even during the trial, it was like eventually, you know, the bottom's going to fall out of, of this whole process and I'm going to be back to where I was supposed to be. Uh, this cracked me up. Every year on his birthday, he would put up a new statue of himself. I'm like where the, right next to the last one <laughs> <laughs> and his birth bir- chart <laughs> <laughs> his birthday was declared a national holiday hell yeah is it still celebrated do you know i don't think so uh now there's a thousand holidays for <laughs> thousands of yeah. Psalms. <laughs> yeah it sounds like there's no more of those statues i think people people yanked him down right yeah, the- when he was uh Right when he was captured, and I remember the one, the one specific one. Yeah, had no idea that was one of dozens that yeah. could have been roped down. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought that was the one. Same, yeah. yeah. Well, dude, that particular one. If you go back and watch the video, or even if you look at the picture, as they yank it off, the boots are still there. Somebody went in and got the boots, and then the boots were being sold as um, at at auction. Really? Yeah. Whoever stole them got to keep the money yes. from it. Yeah, that rules. This was kind of interesting too, and it was uh, it was surprising that they did this. But before they yanked it down, there there was a soldier trying to tie an American flag to his face. But then one of the Iraqis that were at the foot of the statue asked if they could just put an Iraqi flag over his face instead. And the guy's like, "Yeah, okay, cool." Yeah, well, this is just the flag I had on me. So <laughs> yeah, if you have another flag, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're all out of "Don't Tread on Me" flags. <laughs> Is this a Canadian flag? Where'd you even get this? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I'm a big Rush fan. <laughs> <laughs> but his first trial is, um, he's captured in two, that end of 2003. His first trial is October of 2005. Please not guilty to all these charges. These are all war crime charges. And who is performing the trial? It, it's uh, in Iraqi court. Okay. No oversight from American. No, these are all Iraqis all. there, yeah. and like it's insane, man. There's um, there's lawyers that are disappearing. There's lawyers that are getting killed. There's one guy who is, I think, his his second in command in his cabinet in Hussein's cabinet that gets dragged in the court, uh, in his underwear. They just took him out of his house in the middle of the night and they brought him to court to testify. And you see, he's That's awesome. Jake, he's sitting there. He's testifying in long johns. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! That's how all trials should be. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wake up, bitch! <laughs> They're all screaming testify. at each other. <laughs> it is fun to watch, man. God, it's wild west. Yeah, there's footage of that. Yes. Wow, dude. So I mean, like, are, are these lawyers that are getting killed? Are they like forced to be involved? Because it's like you see the first two lawyers get killed. You're like, I'm out of here, dude. I don't want to be called to I don't represent know. Fine, this. pro bono. Fine, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't know, man. That's crazy. I mean, he's still pulling hits yeah. on trial. Yeah. So I, there are probably still a lot of people who thought like him and that, like, we got this. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll weather uh-huh. the storm. Yeah. We did it before when the U.S. invaded. We'll do it again. But... Yeah, there were a couple of dudes that hung in with him till the end. Uh, he had a half brother named Hassan, who was fighting back when the judge was clapping at him, and he called the court uh, the daughter of a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Love to call an inanimate object. Um. Yeah, and and, and in all right, so that trial was October of two thousand and five, November of two thousand and six. He's found guilty of of all these charges, and he's sentenced to hang. Did you ever see the hanging video? Yeah. It's kind of fucked up, and it's got to be terrifying. As, as you're being led to your death, all these men are screaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it didn't look like a fun way to die, no. for sure. <laughs> no. If I recall, does his neck just snap immediately and he dies? I would hope so. Yeah. I think now, from that height. One question does. I had about the video, maybe you could answer this for me, but... It looked as though he was lying flat on his back. When they drop it? 
Yeah, so I wonder if the fucking rope was long enough and if he died just from his head hitting the fucking floor below. No, I think they, uh, length, like, that's how they got him down. Okay. I think they just lengthened the rope once he died. Okay. Yeah, because it was only, like, probably 15 feet. Up, right? They it was a weird him. setup. Initially, I thought they were just doing it from like a random building, but it looked like as they got him into place, it looked like it was a regular ass gallows. Yeah, yeah, it looked like pretty, uh, pretty classic Costco style gallows to me. <laughs> yeah. And so, December thirtieth, two thousand six, Jake, uh, he was he was hung to death. To death. Okay. Mm-hmm. He just he woke up one morning and was like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> but man, what a legacy left behind! One of the one of the cool things he did was he had a Quran written in his own blood. Oh my god! Like you over time, afterward, like donated his blood. And no, 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 no. Okay. It was while he was still alive. Oh, but it was estimated that he would have had to have donated fifty liters of blood. So people didn't believe it was all his blood. Uh huh. Um, but it was something that was made. I mean, and he could have. Donated the blood over years, or you guys gotten the blood, more blood? Could have been, yeah. You guys need more. I can get you more blood. <laughs> I pump blood better than anyone. <laughs> but I mentioned all these palaces. Uh, however many palaces he had, he would have dinner prepared at each palace every night because he never wanted people to know where he was. That's so many wasted dinners. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I would good ass shit too. Would probably eat them. I would hope he did have people that he hired just to be taste testers to ensure he wasn't being poisoned. Yeah, that's common practice for dictators. Mm-hmm. I think. What a job, man. I, I know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're dying, at least you're going out with something tasty. Oh, you dude, know? what if, like, uh, I don't know. How would you get poisoned with a 96% approval rating? <laughs> 99.6, I think. <laughs> um, but definitely check out that GQ article because there's so much, like, funny information. They say that, like, when he was held captive, all the guys seemed to love him. He was he was very cordial to everybody. He liked learning about their lives. Oh, what the fuck did he say? He was like, uh, he would always give like advice on how to meet women. He's like, find one that's not too young, not too old, not too fat, not too thin. knows knows how to cook and clean. He's like, and then you got to thank him and you got to spank him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, he takes over for mystery on that. <laughs> and dude, he loved Cheetos. And one day they ran out of Cheetos. So one of the soldiers that was guarding him recently got a care package that had a family sized bag of Doritos in it. And he's like, dude, you can have these. So he gave him Doritos and he said instantly he fell in love with them. He became a Dorito man. He's a Doritos. Uh, he would he call kicked Cheetos to the curb after uh, that. John, this is so cute. He would refer to Doritos as Dories. Oh my God. That is, <laughs> that is so adorable. That is awesome. God damn it, yeah. man. But he would do something disgusting with them. When he would open a fresh bag of Doritos, he would dump a little bit of water in there for some reason. What the fuck's that for? Why? I don't know. Nobody could explain Soggy it. Soggy him up a little it's, bit? It's just something he liked to do. What a unique quirk. He truly is. For a funny little man. Um, How tall was the fella? Do you know? Oh, fuck. I don't know. And this is something I usually do. According to his bio, eight feet. <laughs> his weight always fluctuated, too. And he always liked to uh, wear shit that was flattering because as he got older, he put on a little punch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is that? Six feet? Oh, that's a good dictator height. Yeah, that's perfect. That but I like wonder if that's dictator number. math. If yeah. he's like 5'8". Yeah. Yeah. In the uh, in the program. Yeah, I believe yeah, I that know shit, that motherfucker man. was tall. motherfucker was yeah. balling. Looks like fucking Arab Snoop Dogg. He played for the Washington Generals. <laughs> mm. oh, that's is. inflated. I don't believe that. Yeah, 6'6". Six, six. I don't know. He's, he's lanky, though. Was he? Yeah. Don't they say like the height is always like in between the mother and the father? Like I've never heard generally, that. Generally, no. Oh, uh, man. I, so yeah. I wonder if... And, uh, our producer Jeff is also no. making a very... You are stupid for saying that face and shaking his head no. <laughs> uh, what else did I want to fucking tell you about his time in captivity? He would off, always offer cigars, and he always had Cuban cigars. His wife would bring them, and then he'd want to share them with the soldiers. They weren't supposed to take them, but sometimes they'd have a... Uh, the Cuban cigar. The person in charge out there would just be like, just go ahead, man. It's yeah. cool. Smoke them if you got them, boys. Now, did do you think Saddam, did he get to visit Cuba? Or did Castro come to him? I don't know. That's a good question. I hope he got to visit in a fucking Caribbean know, island. Man. Yeah. Is there I think he loved Iraq, man. Traveling outside of uh, the Middle East at all? 
repeat that again. Is there anything like uh, any stories of him traveling outside of the Middle East at all? I didn't hear any, man. One thing about that was that it was difficult to travel a picture of for regular Splash citizens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have coffee every morning out of like <laughs> him and, and fucking. Uh, um, all right, this is ruined. Where are they, Cuba? <laughs> no. That's him in Cuba? Oh, Hell good yeah. for him, man. Cool. Yeah, of him and Fidel Castro in the log flume. God, that was so fucking hard to get to. He got there. Yeah. He loved Raisin Bran. Check out his uh, island outfit, dude. Just a full suit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would think he would go with like the uh, the uh, the Martin Short. <laughs> fucking, uh, what was that movie he was in where he was a little boy Clifford? Clifford. Clifford. Yeah, he was got the Clifford shorts on and the, the suit top. <laughs> Clifford, banger of a film. It yeah. was good, man. Oh, but Saddam, he loved Raisin Bran. One time they gave him Fruit Loops and he fucking lost it. How many people got shot in the face for that one? <laughs> Jesus. But he would, yeah, it's anytime like he would ask for breakfast, he would specifically say no Fruit Loops after that Fruit Loops morning. Fruit Loops are good. I think so too, but. Nah, not if you're used yeah. to the other thing. It's so sweet compared yeah. to. True. What do you say, Raisin Bran? Yeah. Yeah, yeah is, I mean, those are. That's a good man cereal. That's yeah. A bitter cereal. Keeps you regular. Yeah. He was blowing out that toilet. He was also a little writer too. Did you guys know that? No way. Yep. He wrote. Uh, I think he wrote four novels and uh, romance. No fucking way. Are they dog shit? They're decent, man. There's the one that I saw. I didn't read it all, but what I read, it, I mean, it was coherent and it was a decent story. It was called Zabiba and the King, and it's about a woman that's being mistreated, so she finds love with uh, the king. You think it was about Sanjana? I think it could have been, yeah. I think he was the lady. <laughs> you think he was the lady in the I, book? I think the abusive husband was the United States. Oh, my God. You think what? he was writing allegories? I do. This, Holy dude, shit. These books were actually studied by the CIA to see if they can get a glimpse in his thought process. Good for him. Yeah. And he would also write poetry. I was just going to ask, did he write any poetry? He did. That's so funny. <laughs> but the examples that I read uh, were... In that GQ article, and uh, the guys are very funny about it. They're like, uh, yeah, most of it was dog shit. Like, I remember one day he was talking about one about finding a, a fucking blender in a street in Iraq, and I was just like, whoa, that's good, man. Like, he's, <laughs> he's like, I have no idea what the fuck he was talking about. Even his fucking yes men were like, yeah, fucking um, keep going, brother. Yeah, man. They also said that he would he would try to tell this joke, but it was so funny to him that he could never get it out. And the soldier said, to this day, he still has no idea what the joke is, but the premise is it revolves around a sheep and three men. Oh, my God, dude. He <laughs> thinks fucking a sheep is so funny that he can't even finish the joke. That's incredible. <laughs> I love Saddam. I do too. Many ass <laughs> Fuck. I know. I didn't think it's I hard like not him to, so man. much after this. Oh, uh, dude. And a bunch of the guys had tattoos. So he would like to talk about tattoos because he had a couple. Um, when you came from the tribe that he came from, you would get uh, purple dots on your wrist. And most people, because uh, he became, he came from humble beginnings, and most people who are able to, to rise to any kind of position of promise or of um, prominence, they would get the... Uh, tattoos colored in so that it was more matching to their skin so people wouldn't know they were from that area but saddam always stayed true to his roots and he kept his tattoo so he would show that off and also he had one on his forearm it wasn't distinguishable what kind of animal it was but it was some kind of four-legged animal he says that he got it when he was nine years old and that he traded uh he traded 10 watermelons for this tattoo it's an anamorph what a fucking lie dude <laughs> He was just carrying yeah. 10 watermelons around when he <laughs> passed a tattoo artist in the desert. Cat Von D. All that's showing up is tattoos of Saddam Hussein. And I would love to see the rest of these people's bodies that have Saddam tattoos. Dude, he fell in the shower one day when he was captive. And they had to, like, pick him up naked and bring him back to the cell. Oh, I know. Would you, would you pick a dictator up if he was naked and wet? I think, I'd, honestly, I'd piss on him. Oh, even nah. this guy that you like? Yeah. I'm doing my job as an American. Yeah. I'd Piss on him, talent. hose him off, hose off your DNA. Yeah. One thing that was interesting is that um, there were no stories of torture, which I would assume that he would get because, like, when they caught him, the image is pretty brutal. Like, when they yanked him out of the hole, they clearly fucked him up. Yeah. Um, So it is interesting that they really took good care of him. And 
Apparently, they would give him just about everything he asked for. The one thing that I found that they would not accommodate was he wanted a ping pong table. Give the guy a fucking ping pong I know. table. He liked Forrest Gump, man. Just give uh, him a fucking ping pong table. Oh, dude, I almost forgot to tell you this, but this is so fucking disgusting. The way he would take a shit was this. He would put a chair in front of himself in the cell. He would put a towel over the chair so that you couldn't see him straight on. He would take his shit, and he would never use toilet paper. He would use his left hand to wipe his ass. And then he had a hose hooked up to a sink that he would use to rinse off his own hand. So that's true. (laughs) Still like him? I'm just going (laughs) to never shake a left-handed person. (laughs) We do it every podcast, man. (laughs) In that area of the world, I mean. Yeah. Imagine knowing that information and then having Saddam Hussein come behind you and put his hands around your eyes. Guess who? (laughs) Oh, no. I hope it's not who I think it is. I have pink eye. (laughs) Saddam, I have pink eye. And this was kind of sweet, too. He would encourage people, almost a man, I guess, that people in Iraq referred to him as Uncle Saddam. <laughs> Uncle Dave from fucking <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop 3. Did you, do you remember um, Uday's Golden Guns? Well, Saddam liked those, too. Yeah. Do you have his own set? Yeah. That's- the AK-47 was the prize piece. Golden? Yeah. Oh, my Jesus God. Jesus Christ. I dude. know, man. And that's like not just go- it's not gold plated like the whole thing is gold, right? Everything's gold. Babe. Imagine fucking how fucking heavy that thing is. God, no. Just trying to do like the photo op and struggling the whole time. Like, did you get it? Did you get it? And then Executing finally- a guy with it and just <laughs> never hitting where you're trying to hit. <laughs> ah, fuck, man. Yeah, you need another stronger man to help you lift it up. <laughs> oh wow! There's, I I saw something. Who I always get him confused. Who's the dad? And who's the son? Uh, North Korea fellows. Kim Jong. Un is the new new one? He's the new fellow. And Kim Il Jung was Il the dad. Was the dad. Um, it looks as though he's going to have his daughter succeed him. Really? Yeah. Wow. Is that a recent thing that he's yeah. stated? She's been seen with him more and more in public. And so they're pe- theorizing. Yeah, that she's going to be the new. And uh, that would be, obviously, the first female yeah. ruler of North Korea. Progressive. Yeah, badass. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy because his he wasn't even supposed to get it right. His brother was supposed to get it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, the, his brother was like excommunicated from North Korea because they caught him going to Disney World. That little fucker. So they found him there, and then basically they excommunicated him. Said like you're not allowed back. <laughs> and as soon as the son took over power, that's remember that um, was he the the brother, the one that got killed in the airport. Uh, remember that attack that happened when someone got like poisoned in the airport and like uh-huh, uh, kind of. Like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's if that wasn't their brother, that was someone close to the or you know some some other enemy. But then he ended up killing his brother after the fact, after he was already like not a threat anymore, just because he was traveling yeah. and using his name. Uh huh. I remember that. That was pretty early on in his yeah reign, like week one, terror. week two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Want to make a good impression? Yeah. Man, that's so terrible, man. I thank God I don't give you guys the information every week. Jesus Christ. No, I liked it, man. That was great, dude. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so fucking hard for me to sit through that. <laughs> me too. I know he was a big Dennis Rodman fan, and Rodman used to yeah. go over there to visit with him. Dude, how cool would it be to hang out with a dictator for a weekend? Dude, I mean, you can't say no to that. We could no. probably ask Dennis Rodman about this. I think we could get to Dennis Rodman. I would hope so. I think he'd be cool on here. I think we might be able to. Do a little Zoom. Go to his house. No, I want to get him here, man. Ball. Yeah, you'll get him here? Does he still booze? I don't know. I don't know anything about him. No. I think that would might, might be the uh, enticement we could use. Yeah, that's the last. Uh, yeah, come on, bro. Just come get fucked up with us in the back room. <laughs> 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 that that would be the time for me to fall off the wagon. Like I yeah. would love to see like my wife just like open the door and be like, "Why are you guys podcasting so late?" And I'm just back here, <laughs> just doing drugs with Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> it's you listening to an old episode just <laughs> alone and just. <laughs> Staring at Dennis Rodman in that wedding dress. Oh, I would love that shit, man. He stirred it up back in the day, man. Yeah, he was the man. Yeah. Dude, I love any guy that can convince his, his coach to let him just go to Vegas for a while to get away from the team. Yeah. So that means you like James Harden? I kind of do. And you know what? I don't hate Ben Simmons. I you like, turned on him. You turned around. Yeah, I don't like any... I like any guy that could just tell work to suck it. 
You do have to kind of respect that, but I think it's a certain point. You're living every kid's goddamn fucking dream. I know, yeah. Act appropriately. Yeah, I hate that new fucking kid that forced a trade from the Flyers. I know Cutter, nothing about him. Yeah, yeah, Cutter can sucker go Jay. My, 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 mind. My, well, you know my, what, my, 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 my. <laughs> It'll be all right. How are we going to do this weekend? You guys feeling good? I don't. I think the Eagles yeah. I think the Eagles might slop their way to a win. Yes. Yeah, Keep possibly. everybody hooked for another week. And, and then just get have to play the 49ers. Four wife by them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> prime time. I mean, here's the deal though. It's like you Stranger do, things have happened. Right. Then. You gotta win three games and you're in the fucking Super yeah. Bowl. How do you feel? I mean, I would like to think that we can handily take over the fucking Bucks game. Yeah. It's going to be a sh- uh, shitty I mess, mean, too. Yeah, We've been thinking that for the last month, mm-hmm. six yeah. weeks. Part of me is hoping, like, this whole time they've been playing possum to get people off the game plan against them. So, you I know what I mean? there's a very low you, chance you of drop, that. I, know, I know. You drop in late. Never happened in NFL history. <laughs> it's a little used tactic. Well, I'm in the writer's room at the NFL, and <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what's about to happen. Yeah, there's, uh, I think... Jeff and I were talking before. Uh, I think, I think the Niners and the Ravens have very strong chances, but the dark horses, the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they, I feel like they've earned one. I would, you know, dude, I'd like to see Josh Allen get one. I would love th- that city deserves something. Yeah, <laughs> dude, yeah. dude, for the love of Christ, can you please oh God, give they, Buffalo something? They never won in the nineties. Nothing. They, they, they went lost. to four straight fucking Super Bowls. Like, that's so heartbreaking. I think he's mostly talking about how how sad the town is at this point. Yeah. It's I mean it's like they get the worst weather. Uh-huh. I mean people die coming home from work. The Sabres are always bad. The Sabres got fucking job in the Stanley Cup finals in uh 99 I think it yeah. was. The bad boy Barnaby. Yeah, he stuck up for the Flyers this week. I was happy for him. Did he? Yeah. With that trade? Uh yeah, talking about how cool it would be to play here. Yeah. Um but yeah, I I for the city of Buffalo, I hope that the Bills if the Eagles can't win this year, I hope that the Bills can. Cuz excruciating. Uh-huh. Four fucking consecutive Super Bowls and you don't win one. Yeah. And the first one, the guy Ray Finkled it. And they've been having three three or four rising seasons recently, yeah. right? Yeah. I thought uh <laughs> what was what was the year the, Ch- the Chiefs was it last year where they played the Chiefs in the AFC Championship? Oh, okay. The last two years was Bengals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're due, man. I wouldn't mind seeing them. I like a lot of those guys. Yeah. It's fun though. The fucking the Dolphins Chiefs game is going to be insane because it's going to be zero degrees and fucking snowing. Whoa. They're telling people not to come. Are you serious? Because the weather's going to be that bad, yeah, but people are going to come. Oh, it's going to be packed. Yeah. And, I mean, they just they can't delay the game, right? They can't do it the next day? or No, I think unless there's, like, fucking lightning, which might affect the Eagles game, that they can't, they'll, they'll just get it in. Hmm. Lightning technicality. That sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Siri, how do you make lightning? <laughs> so you start in the tunnel. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't control the weather. I That's love it. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. That's how domes were created. <laughs> from then controlling the weather, Jake. Oh, you say domes are just like a little cap. <laughs> yes. A little stadium cap. Yeah, I can't wait though. Playoff football, baby. Yeah, we get one. Hopefully we get four. Yeah. I'll be wearing Eagles hats until I shouldn't wear them anymore. Until it makes me sad to see myself in the mirror in one. I have another lookalike for you. Whom? Do you know Zach Hampel, the baseball guy? He like goes to every game and catches a home run? Yeah. He has a guy that he accompanies. He a fat, retarded friend. <laughs> yeah. He does. No. Yeah. So this guy goes to him to a bu- with a bunch of games. I think the guy's an MLB employee, and uh, he tags along with him and he gets him in places. And uh, what the fuck is this guy's name? I can't remember, but I'll find him and I'll show him to you. But you look a lot like him. It doesn't sound like he's gonna make me feel good. He's a fine guy. 
All right, that's that doesn't make me feel good either. <laughs> Jake, have we ever talked about what look alike you get? Oh man, no. What, what do I get? I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, I get well. Chaz Bono was the one, but that's outdated now. Nanette. Kathy Bates. I wish I got Kathy Bates. <laughs> I wish I got Kathy Bates. I would love some Kathy Bates energy, man. <laughs> Take a sledgehammer to some people's <laughs> ankles. I'll call you Kathy Bates. Oh. <laughs> let I me heal. Let me heal those to- tootsies. Bring them over here, John. Not bad. Yeah. Damn, I look like Kathy Bates. I'm just. Um, people might say that. I don't know. Streets people are talking, might. Jake. If people do say it, <laughs> let me see how surprised. I'm saved in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Jakes. <laughs> Kept calling my house the Bates Motel. Now I realize why. Oh, man. Are you guys excited for True Detective? I hear I should be. Yeah, when's it starting? I think this week. Oh, yeah, shit. either this week or next Dude, week. Jodie Foster's the fucking best, man. I can't wait to see what she does. And I love that she's impressed by, uh, what the fuck's his name? The guy who was uh, shot uh, Lennon. Oh, uh, Mark David Chapman. Yeah, Mark David Chapman. Yeah. No, I thought she was impressed by... Um, oh, the guy that just got out, Hank- right? Hankel. Hinkley. Hinkley, Hinkley yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, the guy that shot at Reagan for Jody. My Foster. bad. Yeah, confusing your um, crazy guys again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I liked how she came out to support him and, and said that she thought he was hot. That was a very nice thing to do. Um, I forget what I was going to say, but I can't wait for True Detective. Man. Oh yeah, I didn't see season three. I didn't either. I okay. I kind of checked I didn't out know it too. Season three, yeah, same. Season, season one two might have been so fucking bad. Yeah, season one, the might have been the best season of television. Yeah, ever. season yes. two didn't hold a candle to it, so I kind of gave up. It was like actively bad. Yeah, and by comparison, it just was absolute dog shit. But I heard good, good things about season three. I never saw it. Yeah, me neither. It's it's so hard. Like, how do you outdo the first season? It's one of those things where it's like you're do fucked. You, do you even? Just do something completely different. Mm-hmm. You know, don't make another true detective season. Yeah. Make do some dog detectives. Oh, wow. Puppets. I didn't, I'd be didn't fine see with that. that. Yeah. Anything except for that season. Two. It's like, I don't think Stranger Things should still be a show. Yeah, I couldn't that get into good that. for maybe two years. First season, very cool. Yeah. Season two, it's like, yeah, the, the same town, the same group of kids. What are the chances? <laughs> Season one of True Detective, um, I'm convinced that I'll never be scared of anything ever again. Bro. Every now and again, something comes along. Yeah. True Detective scared the living shit out of yeah. me. Yeah. That was horrifying. Week by week. Riveting. There was, I think there was even one week where they like skipped because it was a holiday or something or like mm-hmm. a game that they didn't show an episode on. And I remember being like, fuck, this is my fucking fix. Mm-hmm. Where's the show? Yeah. Yep. Man. Have you rewatched it? I have not, no. I've rewatched one scene a lot. Oh, Jesus Christ. You sick fucking pervert. <laughs> I'm not just saying. I'm watching. You get off by adultery, best friend, partner, adultery. <laughs> you sick freak. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, remind me not to bring my fucking wife to the barbecue next year. <laughs> <laughs> there was a barbecue? <laughs> yeah, what if you're. I'm your, so sorry. <laughs> what if your wife got injured on his broken bed? <laughs> <laughs> How would that alter the course like, of your friendship? Slats go through her heart. <laughs> yeah, she was <laughs> impaled <laughs> like a fucking Dracula. <laughs> what are you doing? Up here? <laughs> Jake puts a, a necklace of garlic around her neck. <laughs> are these t-shirts or bed sheets up here? <laughs> I should go feed my baby soon, honestly. <laughs> what are you getting from Wawa? <laughs> you know I'm going to McDonald's on Girard Avenue. Um, how does she react to your McNugget buddies? The baby? Yeah. She's not allowed to touch those things. <laughs> <laughs> They're big boy toys. <laughs> big boy toys. <laughs> it sounds like yeah. a fun sex line you can get into there. What would you do if uh, you saw a McNugget buddy in the hand of the baby? In the hand of the baby? Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I would be fine with that. I'm... Would you slap the baby's hand? <laughs> if she spits up on it, we're going to have a fucking issue. <laughs> it's, you know, it's immediately going into the mouth. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. She, I mean, she can't have them. She's probably she can teething. Have, she can get a Darla because I got doubles of that. That's nice of you. Not the one that went down his pants open. No, that's, no, that's for somebody else. Yeah, yeah, that's getting mailed to a fan. Oh, we got to sign that tonight, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, 
<laughs> Jake, do you want to promote anything before we go, fella? Uh, just follow me on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter and all that stuff, at Jake Matura. That's it. Me too. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Johnny Delco. Uh, I'll be in Austin January 26, 27 at Cap City, and I'll be in Indianapolis March 22nd and 23rd. We're coming to Boston, baby. Come see us April 5th at White Bold Tavern in beautiful Boston. I love Boston so fucking much, man. Yeah. I can't wait to get back there. Um, if you're into it, I believe the Red Sox are playing that weekend, and I've never been to Fenway, so I would love to go. out yet? Yeah, they are. Really? Yeah. yeah. They've been out, brother. Oh, you can't buy tickets yet, though, right? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> we're We're going to be in Boston April 5th. We'll be there one way or another. We'll figure out the game shit later, but come see us. That, that place fucking rules. Yeah. I had a blast there when I was there with uh, Tim and Colm two years ago. And uh, the, everybody came out and fucking, we had a blast, man. Dude, that's, yeah, that's awesome. We're going to have a good time. There's good food. Mm -hmm. We're going to hang, do some fun things. I don't know what we can do. Yeah, I got I to gotta set a designated place uh, where they can find the tickets, but I, I tweeted it out on, on Twitter the other day so you can go there. But I'll find a designated place and have it set up. I'll put it in the, in the description link of this episode. So if you can come out that night, we would love to see your your sweet smiling face. Uh, also, I'm picking one other person for the weekend with the rain train. So anybody who buys a book is eligible. Go to onperks.com. Grab a book. If you've already gotten one, no need to grab another. If you want to, God bless you. But uh, if you want to become eligible for that, I'm going to pick a random order number. Actually, I'm going to have these two sweet boys pick a random order number. The last episode of Little Stinkers this month, and that includes uh, round trip airfare to the beautiful city of Philadelphia, hotel accommodations for the weekend. We're going to go to a Phillies game with Chris Wood and Ryan Shaner. I'm going to take it to my favorite pizza place, which is Pika's Pizza in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. Um, we're going to have a special screening of MacGruber with my dear friend Tim Butterly. Uh, we're going to have we're going to do all kinds of shit, and we'll do some shit you want to do. I don't give a fuck. It's your weekend, man. <laughs> You're like the male Oprah, dude. That's so much awesome stuff. Oprah's never given away that much stuff. Fuck, oh, dude. I'm, <laughs> dude, I'll, we'll fucking kill Oprah if no, that's what you want to no. do this weekend. Jesus. Dude, we Christ. will cut it. Cut the feed. <laughs> dude, we'll, we'll cut her head off and mail it Stop to Stedman. It. But on perks.com, I would love to hang out with you. So let's make that happen. But thanks for watching tonight, man. This. Everybody really put me in a good mood, man. I was in a sour mood after that fucking Jody Arias bullshit, but I feel great right now. I'm glad you turned your spirits around. Yeah. Well, you guys always do it for me. You always turn me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby. Well, I'm going to have nightmares about that whole purge thing. Yeah. Uh, Very fucked up, man. I don't like that. And uh, I have to. I appreciate you learning and ingesting all this information. I enjoyed this one. Yeah. There was a lot of fun stuff that I learned. It's your kind of guy. He is. Yeah. yeah. Just... Does some awful things, but deep down, yeah. he's fun to hang out with. When did the schedules come out? They've been out, man. From like no, what? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so stupid, man. They're not playing the Rockies on 420 this year. Well, at least you had last year, though. They're playing the White Sox on 420. Was they I, playing the I, weekend? We're there. <laughs> I'm not talking about the Red Sox. I'm talking about Philly. Oh, Phillies. Okay. Should I go to a Rockies game and just pretend it's 420? Probably. I'm sure right? you will. And then I'll go on 420 and I'll wear my Phillies gear. There's That's the there compromise. Yeah. Now we're cooking with fucking Are dumbass. Are you going to bring a sign and say, like, remember 420 last year? And then, like, bunch of question marks? I'll get the marks. same dugout um, seat that I had last year. Is there a section 69 that you could sit in? Oh. Is it fucking, I got a 69 you can sit, sit on. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need two tickets or one? <laughs> Sir, my face is clearly up his yeah. ass. Yeah, just imagine legs sticking out of a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> legs in an One asshole. Foot standing room, but <laughs> we'll try that this year. Yeah. But all right, uh, yeah. If you're watching this on Patreon, thanks for becoming a patron. If you're not, consider joining us on Patreon. At patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L I L S T I N K E R S. You get every episode a week early. You get extra episodes. You get to help us write letters to all these fucking fucked up murderers. One of them's going to pay off. I have a feeling somebody's going to give us something too good, Jake. Yeah. Oh, too good. Too good. Uh, too next good. week, we're doing a stinker news. Every month, 
we do a roundup of all the most fucked up true crime stories and talk about them. I've got some humdingers lined up for next week, brother. I cannot wait. I am terrified. And uh, yeah, any other cool shit that we do, we do live episodes, all kinds of cool stuff. I promise you, you'll get more bang for your buck from the Little Stinkers Patreon than you do any other Patreon. We'll kill them too. If anybody's out there doing more than us, we'll kill them so that we're on top. But I promise you, if you like Little Stinkers, consider joining the Patreon. All right. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. And uh, I hope you have a pleasant week and all your wildest dreams come true. We're still going to kill Oprah. Boston is away that weekend. Well, no. Yeah, so we'll be at the duck boats in Boston Garden. Well, we can visit Fenway, though. Yes. We're good on the field. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Stinkers.